Hello everybody and welcome back. I am the Sovereign and this is my court. Welcome to another session of the Court Council. I am calling this Court Council together at 6.30 in the evening and typically I don't film this late, but I am also adding this to the Court Council because this is a major, the biggest hot topic in the world at this moment. Typically we will hold Privy Councils for political discussions, but because this is so important and it's on the forefront of everyone's mind and everyone is affected by this, it is a court council meeting. So I'm sure you've seen all over your newsfeed, on the news and Twitter and TV and all over the internet, Facebook, everywhere you look, people are talking about Russia versus Ukraine. And a lot of people, including my mom, mom, watch the video. Watch the video, I'm gonna help you out here. A lot of people are like my mother and that they don't understand. They don't know where this is coming from. They don't know why they should even care to be honest, which you should care. But I get that a lot of people just are not in touch with political issues or understanding the mechanical chessboard of like the world political system. So I'm going to do my very best to break this down in a fun way for you guys, but also in, in an intellectual way. Now, for those of you that are severely into politics, we're not gonna dive super, super deep. They're not ready for that, so, okay? So don't be yelling at me from the comments section. I'm just going to kind of bring them through history up to the current moment. Understand that anything you do watch on YouTube right now concerning this issue is likely going to be two to three hours out of date the moment it even uploads because information is constantly coming out like hour after hour, minute by minute, it moves so fast. So it's really difficult to keep up, but I'm just, I'll, we're gonna get through this together and you're gonna understand why this is so important. In order to understand what's happening right now, you really need to understand your history. People are always like, well, why do we have to learn history? This is why, in order to understand today's current topic and mindset and why things are happening, you have to understand how World War I and II happened. During World War II, a lot of the European nations had alliances with each other. You know, France would back the UK and everybody was friends with Poland and most countries at least had one major alliance. And when you're in an alliance with another nation, usually that means means that you will militarily defend them if they happen to go to war or are invaded. So when Germany started its expansion, a lot of the European nations banded together against Germany because they consider attack against one is attack against all. So you hit one European nation, all the European nations gang up on you. Now that's how World War II started. Now, why am I telling you about World War I and World War II? It's because when you guys woke up on Twitter this morning, World War III was trending. And the reason World War III was trending was kind of for the same reason. Ukraine is kind of friends, not only with the rest of Europe, Europe, but with the United States. And the United States has had a long standing grudge match with the Russians ever since what, World War II. And through the Cold War, the United States and Russia kind of have never really gotten along, but these are two superpower nations and I will let you know why it's a problem for two superpower nations to really get into battle with each other. Okay, okay, let me try to break this down in a fun way that like everybody can kind of understand, like reality TV show style. Think of the world like one big, slightly estranged, kind of dysfunctional family. Let's start off with Papa United States. Papa United States is kind of a helicopter parent with some aggression issues. Papa United States is married to Canada. Very sweet, very liberal, but he's got two side chicks, the UK and France. Now. Canada knows she doesn't really care. She's a traditional wife and she ain't leaving her man. Sprinkle some kids in there and bam, you have the North Atlantic Treaty Organization known as NATO. That is the word you guys are hearing thrown all over the internet. What the hell is NATO? NATO is an assemblance of different major countries from the Atlantic area working together and deciding that we are not going to fight one another. Nobody's gonna fight the other person. We're going to make it a rule in the group that if one person is attacked, the whole group has to attack. It's kind of like a gang. NATO is the main family unit, the main family segment. There are certain dramas that happen amongst the family members, but they're pretty tight. They have really good relationships with each other and they kind of get along, not too much dysfunction. It works in its own weird way. Now, of course, as with any family, you have the black sheeps of the family, the rebels of the family, the members of the family that everybody kind of looks at sideways. They try to get along with them, but they just, they don't mesh well with the rest of the family. That is brother Russia and brother China. They're both rebels and kind of like to play by their own rules. They've never really been in tight with the family and they know the family kind of disses them behind their backs at family functions. 
Brother China is kind of the sly, mysterious one, silent but deadly, mad fighting skills. While Brother Russia is more of a brute force kind of guy. He's the bro that hits the gym constantly and really likes to flex his muscle. Now enter, cousin Ukraine. Now Ukraine has always been kind of like a neutral family member, but in recent times, Ukraine has actually been trying to make better connections with the rest of the family and get really close. I.e. Ukraine has been trying to join NATO. An attack against one member of the family is an attack against all members of the family. That's how NATO functions. Ukraine really wants to be a part of that because they don't have a large army and they're constantly facing aggression from brother Russia. Now, no one's really mad at Ukraine. Everybody kind of likes Ukraine. Most of the time, the family is willing to accept anybody, but Ukraine getting close to the rest of the family members kind of really pissed off brother Russia. Now here is the family tea. Here's where the family drama gets really juicy. Cousin Ukraine and brother Russia used to date. I know it's kind of gross, nobody liked it, very toxic relationship, but they used to be an item, i.e. the Soviet Union. Like I said, very toxic relationship. But Brother Russia was never really able to get over it. Like he still has scars from losing Ukraine. And now he's been provoked by the rest of the family members and suddenly wants her back. And he's fighting for her. Ukraine wants nothing to do with Brother Russia and the rest of the families already knew that that relationship was weird, but it's really difficult for them to help because she's not technically a member of NATO. So while Brother Russia is trying to force her and be super possessive and just take her for himself, the rest of the family is trying to intervene any way they can. Now, where does Brother China? Brother China is just over there, like he's there. Thing is, even though Brother China is super close with Russia, like they're total bros, Secretly, China's been Facebook friends with Ukraine for a couple years. Now China's not getting incesty about it, okay? China just likes Ukraine, thinks she's a decent woman and they kind of chit chat on Facebook every now and then. So China's kind of trying to toe the line between being a bro to brother Russia and being friends with Ukraine. It's a little bit difficult, but a lot of people are kind of undercover guesstimating that China might be financially supporting Russia through the sanctions of the United States. Cause you gotta see that even though the brothers over on this side, that side, which side are they on? Brother Russia and brother China, even though they're estranged from the rest of the family, brother China is actually pretty well off, has a good business, is doing well for himself. Brother Russia, not so much. And it's kind of being financially supported a little bit by the other members of the family. You know, like, yeah, you're the black sheep of the family, but mom and dad every now and then will slip you like a few 20 bucks and some money here and there. So. Certain members of the family have been helping Brother Russia rebuild his motorcycle, fix the pipes in his house, certain things like that. But since Brother Russia wanted to start acting like a jerk, the rest of the family members don't wanna help him with anything. So people are kind of thinking that maybe Brother China's kind of slipping him a few bucks here and there to sustain his capabilities. Now, like I told you guys, Papa Bear USA has got a little bit of a temper and behind his wife and his girl's backs has kind of been hitting the gym. On top of the fact that United States is totally overprotective and likes to be involved in everything. I told you, helicopter parent. So the rest of the family typically is holding the United States back from getting overly involved and the rest of the family members nonsense. But this time, Brother Russia has actually pissed off the family and it's almost seeming like the rest of the family are willing to let loose on Papa USA and start duking it out. This could turn into the ultimate Jerry Springer Thanksgiving family brawl, which seems really funny. Yeah, and then you remember that, you know, all these family members are holding nukes. In the history of the world, we have not yet seen two nuclear powered countries go to war with one another. Nuclear weapons are used as a deterrent to war. Now, Ukraine does not have nuclear weapons, Russia does, but there are many members of NATO who have nuclear capabilities, not just the United States, but also France and the United Kingdom. The president of Russia, when he was addressing his public and the world, seemed to make threats of his willingness to use nuclear weapons. Now, do I personally think he would go that far? No. and. Personally, this is where you start getting into the psychology and the prediction that goes along with political thinking and the strategy. In my own strategy, Putin kind of operates like Kim Jong-un from North Korea. You cannot cower, you cannot crumble under their aggression. You gotta call their bluff. No, I don't think that Vladimir Putin is willing to drop nukes on anybody, especially the United States or any, any member of NATO, because as, mem as many nuclear weapons that Russia has, he doesn't have more than the rest of the world. 
or even just the NATO superpowers in general. So th that's called mutually assured destruction when two nations that have nuclear capabilities launch nukes on one another. It's that guaranteed response that keeps other nations from firing nukes. Meaning if you hit me, I'm gonna hit you back. So nobody's gonna hit nobody. Otherwise we all die, basically. Yes, Putin is crazy, but I don't think he's that much of a madman. And it seems like the United States is totally willing and waiting, like waiting for any excuse to get into the fray. Biden's been on TV constantly and he's been saying, you so much as touch any hair on any, not even just a United States citizen, you touch any hair on a citizen of our allies will kill you. Like USA is always looking for a fight. My country is not perfect, okay? And I will call them on it anytime they're acting stupid. So now you kind of know the basis for all the different key players and how things and why things are playing out and why certain countries are not intervening. Ukraine is not a member of the family. Ukraine is not a member of NATO. Had they been a member of NATO, this likely would have escalated into a sort of world war with all the European nations and the United States on one side and likely Russia, maybe even China and other smaller countries on another. That is what they were trying to avoid by keeping Ukraine out of NATO. However, obviously people still want to help the Ukraine. So the United States has issued sanctions. Sanctions is a form of economic punishment designed to restrict money and war capabilities of Russia, meaning they're restricting imports. They're restricting how the Russians are able to use their finances, their access to American banks and the dollar. A lot of countries have loans taken out from other nations and they get money from those nations in order to facilitate their economies. The United States has also frozen the assets of several Russian oligarchs, meaning powerful political influencers within the Russian government, meaning they don't have access to any bank accounts that might be held in the United States or any assets that are in the United States. The Russian people themselves, yes, will be affected. They will likely be faced with shortages of certain foods and imports that they are used to. Now, those of us who have a little bit of experience when it comes to politics are kind of putting two and two together here, thinking that Russia probably anticipated NATO, the family, likely would not intervene because Ukraine is not a member of NATO and also because they don't want a world war. In light of that, Russia also likely anticipated that there would be heavy sanctions against their actions. So if they knew the sanctions were coming, it's very likely that Russia prepared itself prior to starting this military engagement. It's possible that China might be a financial backer to help Russia along in these really heavy, hard times where a lot of countries don't wanna associate with them. They don't wanna to talk to them because this is a very unjustified act of aggression. Now, of course, Russia did try to justify its actions because Russia doesn't wanna seem like a complete warmonger. They're at least gonna come up with one BS excuse to try to justify their nonsense that's happening within the Ukraine. So at first they said that they were just holding military exercises near the border of Ukraine, which honestly is something that happens pretty routinely year to year. So it's not really something to bat an eye at until Russian forces started to prolong their stay in places they long should have left. And then the president of Russia got on TV and declared the independence or recognized the independence of certain sections of the Ukraine, one of them being Donbass. This would be the equivalent of Canada suddenly recognizing the independence of Montana and deciding Montana is an independent state. The president of Russia has said that he has no intention of taking over Ukraine or even ex having an extended stay in Ukraine. He's not trying to conquer Ukraine, so he says. But I am getting messages as we speak. I told you the, the information moves fast. As we speak, I'm getting messages that the forces from Russia are ent entering Kiev, which is the capital city of Ukraine. That is happening right now. Another excuse Russia is using in its aggression towards Ukraine is that there are separatists or Nazi type organizations within the borders of Ukraine that are threatening Russians living within Ukrainian borders and they're fighting those people. Nobody cares. We all know we see through the crap. I call BS. That would be like Canada invading the United States because, you know, KKK members were holding meetings in Alabama still, which they still are, but that's that's a very small minority of the United States that acts stupid. Like every country has like these rogue groups, these rogue militias that aren't necessarily threatening or hurting anybody, but yet Russia is using them as an excuse for invasion and literally everybody sees through it. Some of you are probably sitting there wondering, okay, so how am I affected? Like 
why should I care? Number one, this sets a terrible precedent to the rest of the world because it makes it seem as if the rest of Europe, the United States and NATO members are unwilling to stand up to Russia's act of aggression. And that means they're unwilling to stand up against any other country's act of aggression as long as they're not attacking a NATO ally, a member of the family, the rest of the world is not going to stand up to them, which is a real problem because we have countries such as China who has been pining after Taiwan for ages. Taiwan is a small island off the coast of China that traditionally China in ancient times and like the China dynasty eras, that has been a recognized part of China, but Taiwan broke apart, broke away from China long ago. There's a whole history to that. I won't get into this video, it would be so long. Taiwan is now considered a sovereign nation with its own elected leaders and constitution, but China does not recognize Taiwan and honestly gets severely pissed off at anybody who does recognize Taiwan as an independent nation. China is still trying to conquer Taiwan the same way that Russia is trying to go after Ukraine. So Russia is showing the rest of the world the United States isn't gonna do anything. NATO's not gonna do anything. None of the allies are gonna do anything. No other country is going to stand up against me or any other superpower. So China's over there watching and they're not the only ones. You see, as I said, Russia doesn't like NATO. Russia doesn't like their power. Russia doesn't like their influence and Russia doesn't like the United States. And I'm not gonna say the United States hasn't done some nonsense. The United States likes to provoke Russia any chance they get. The United States is the type of big brother that likes to pick on their other brother and call them names. And Russia is easily provoked. If this all sounds like a really big dick swinging contest to you, you'd be kind of right. This is all about power and money, mostly. Russia wants to expand its power, its wealth, and its dominance and flex its muscles at the rest of the world and show that it is a superpower as well, going up against traditionally the United States, who has never liked that. And as, as nice as the United States likes to pretend to be, United States doesn't really take kindly to people who are bigger than them or even as equally strong as them. And it also kind of gets provoked themselves by little minuscule things that they shouldn't be provoked by. Anyways, back to how you would be affected by all of this. The global economy is extremely intertwined. You will have, for example, peaches that are grown in Argentina, but packaged in Thailand and then sent to the United States. There are many forms of exports that go through many different major stops through many different countries before it arrives at a distribution center or a store. So like the iPhone has components from Mexico, from China, from Japan, from many different countries around the world, even like Brazil. If one of those countries no longer can put out its exports, the entire system of an American company, Apple, goes crashing down, like their stocks plummet and fall and that affects the American money market and the American economy. So the entire global economy can be affected. Russia is really intertwined in the energy segment of the global economy. It exports a lot of oil to many countries, which is why you see on the news, people are talking about rising gas prices. When sanctions are put on Russia, a large majority of the time, part of those sanctions means countries will not buy from you. You will not be able to sell your goods and therefore you will not be making money. But energy is obviously a very important commodity to the entire world. And that was actually one part of sanctions that was left off the list. President Biden did not want to impact the global energy market or severely elevate gas prices. We've seen this before in the 70s, for those of you that know. I wasn't born in the 70s, but I know my history. I'm well aware and I have seen the mile long lines at a single gas pump and the gas pump is empty and people can't get to work. That is what Biden is trying to prevent. Certain other European countries are really willing to take that hit because they're so pissed off at Russia's aggressions, like Germany. Germany is willing to take the hit of cutting off Russia as much as possible. They're pretty pissed off. A lot of European nations are really pissed off at this. And a lot of European nations are afraid for themselves. A lot of the Baltic nations who don't really have superpower militaries the way Russia does or the United States does, they don't really have, and they don't have access to NATO. They're not NATO allies. They are concerned that they could be next. And then of course, there are NATO allies that are within the region and reach of Russia, not only just the countries, but there are military installations, military bases and deployments that are within the reach of Russia that if even honestly, cause the United States is looking for a fight right now. If a single soldier 
got accidentally hit because Russia didn't know that Americans were, you know, on a certain base or in a certain region, United States is sending out jets. United States is always looking for a fight. And that's one thing I can tell the, like the United States needs to calm down. And in this situation, it's probably a little bit more justified, but the United States has always been looking for a fight with Russia. So those of you watching, if you see certain supplies not being brought to your stores, if you see gas prices maybe going up, if you see things suddenly change, it may not be because we're also going through COVID and supply lines have already been super slow, but it's also possible that some of these supply chains go through Russia or Ukraine and have suddenly been stalled because of this conflict. So hopefully I was able to help you understand why this one conflict has global implications for the economy, financially, even for like just simple gas and you trying to get to work to the example that it is setting for other countries and potential conflicts in the future. It's not just China and Taiwan. This is a similar situation. There's other countries that are watching that are thinking in their heads, well, maybe I'm able to be a bit more aggressive or do things, or maybe I don't have to respect these other countries so much because they won't stand up to me. These have implications that are very, very important. I know I didn't dive into everything. I know I wasn't super in detailed. I know I wasn't super specific. For those of you political scholars who are in the comments section, I did that on purpose, okay? So cut me some slack. I'm, I'm trying to help my mother understand this, not give a TED talk. So just relax. But if you wanna talk about it in depth, let me know, come find me. I love it. I'm watching Russia's invading Kiev. So. One, this is like in, in live time, this is uh, the world is calling BS. When, when Putin said, oh, I'm not, I'm not trying to invade Russia. I'm not trying to take over. Clearly a lie. Yes, world leaders lie. Surprise, surprise. In the comment section, let me know what you think about the situation. Do you better understand it now? What has developed since I made this video? Like, I'm sure, like, is the world on fire? Did someone drop a nuke? I wouldn't be, I honestly, I just can't be surprised at this point. Like if, if America is suddenly in a war with Russia by the time this video goes up, I'm gonna be like, Am I surprised? I can't really be, but oh, that would be disastrous by the way, okay? Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and remember, I love you and I will miss you, but you know I will be back in a future video unless nukes are flying. I'll be in a bunker somewhere.